Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Ebby with Ebby Reviews. This is going to be my review and recap for date the season finale of David Makes Man. Hold on. I don't know the name of the episode. Uh, let's go back to here. It's called Sun Sky. So, we start, it was a lot y'all. It was a whole lot. I haven't really processed my feelings for what happened. As of yet, I'm gonna give y'all this review and then think some more on it and then y'all can come back for the live panel on Really Be Channel on Friday so we can get into how we've processed so far. But this is just my off the cuff review. The episode just ended four minutes ago. Okay, so it starts with a flashback of Sky and Chanel. Sky is in his house and he and you hear David talking, and he said, um, I hear my scooter boo. Um, Sky is making some salmon croquettes, and you hear a voice over David. He was like, um, What would I have asked you if I had had the chance? And he started asking all these questions What's your favorite food? What do you like to do for fun? Blah, 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 blah. So, um, Sky is in his home making the salmon croquets and knock at the door. He like, Because when you're a man like Sky, don't everybody know where you live at. Oh, uh, he pulls the gun gun out the kitchen. You are still with the all uh, the flour and the egg on his hands. He goes to the door. It's Shinobi. Shinobi is all over the place because we come to find out Willie Derrick is not the first sibling he lost. He lost his sister to a stray bullet. And Sky um it sits Shinobi down and he's like, You should be with your family. And he's like, I went to the funeral, it was like they didn't even know I was there. And he was like, And he's like, You should be there for your family. He's like, There's nothing I can do for them. Okay. And then Sky gets a phone call. From Ray's mama, who's hysterical, talking about Ray's been in an accident. So Sky takes off. He's in a panic because his baby has been in a car accident. So he gets to the house. He see the car is jacked up. The whole side of the car is messed up. He runs into the house to see, make sure that Ray is okay. Ray is playing video games like nothing happened. So Sky is at 100. His adrenaline is on 100. You know, again, my favorite episode. We have been through depths of despair and worry and panic. And now that I know you're okay, we are in rage. And that's exactly what happened. Sky went into a rage and he started beating him. He's like, I'm going to beat your ass like I should have been doing this whole time. Because Ray is like, oh, wait, it's, it's all right because I just fucked the car. You know, I'm playing these video games trying to get my hair back right. Lots of blue, blue to blue. Not, I'm sorry, I messed up the car. I'm going to get it fixed. None of those things. Just like, eh, mm -hmm. just another day in the neighborhood. I tore up the car that you just bought me. Playing games. So. We see where he's beating him up. And the mama comes between them. And she said, don't you put your hands on my son. I would have been like tag me in but that's just kind of my mind I fight kids professionally I got three gold belts cuz I'm a fighter of children that do stupid shit smart ass mouths disrespectful all of those can get you boxed by me so in the when the mama pulls them off him Ray literally says I'm gonna tell my uncle And he was like, you know where I live. Tell him where to find me. You know where I be at. Where I be. So, we go to the trap house and Sky and David are sitting there and they're having a conversation. And Sky just says to David, you know, this is not what I want you for. This is not what I'm training you up. He was like, but Shinobi, he's like, that's who you following. You falling down behind Shinobi. That's not how I want you to be. That's not where I, how I want you to live. 
And then Desmond comes in with the ski mask and we get the actual factuals of what happened for Sky's murder. They get into a fight. He tells David to run home. David runs off just to come around in his apartment and look out the window and see Scott. Desmond shoots Sky in the back of the head. So the storm is over. We flash back to present time and the storm is over. And David was actually dreaming about all that stuff while they were on the bus. So Gloria wakes him up and he's at there at their stop and she's like, come on. So they get back to the Ville. Nobody has power. Um, David walks to the neighborhood and he feels like everybody, everybody stops and stares at him. But it's not real. It's all in his imagination. So... He goes to say something to Tara, and Tara's like, not now, David, not, I just, I can't, not now. Now, when he saw her last, she was crying on his shoulder, but right now, she's like, I can't, I can't do you right now. So, uh, Shinobi rolls up on David and says, you need to get low, because Desmond is out here looking for us. And Shinobi's face is jacked up. He just got pistol whipped and beat the fuck up by... Desna. So David says to him, get out. He said, we shutting all this shit down. We got plans in motion to get Desmond. Get out and get out now while the getting is good. So, um, Okay, so, um, they go to Willie Derrick's, uh, so, Miss Hertrude comes and yells at Gloria, and she's like, why didn't you tell me you ain't have somewhere to go? She's like, I could have called around and found you someplace to go. And she was like, Miss Hertrude, I ain't got time for all of that. Because clearly Gloria is active in her addiction and she's just can't seem to get it together. Um, so the plan is clearly in full motion at this point to get Desmond. Um, David goes to Willie Derrick's um, vigil with his mama and little brother. And everybody's looking at him like, and I'm coming to him saying we know that you know, what's happening and you are a part of what's happening. He's like, I'm not dealing any drugs. Um, we know what's going on and, and, I, and I know things, but if I tell, you know what happens to me. He's like, I got to protect my family because they're going to come after us if I tell what I know. So, we then cut to Shinobi comes to Elisha's house. He has to get his head right. <laughs> get his head right so um elijah says you can't come in i have company and they have a whole ass argument shinobi calling uh elijah every f word and all this other stuff because he's hurt i think he's hurt because nobody nobody chooses shinobi shinobi is never anyone's choice he's never anyone's person even the one person he thought he had some kind of semblance of something with still doesn't choose him, which is Miss Elijah. And they get into a whole argument and discussion and fight, and to the point to where Elijah says, I know when you see me, you see um, Maybelline. But don't make me come out of this makeup and show you how she was made for it. I said, okay. All right, all right. All right. But uh, Elijah was hurt and in tears by the time Shinobi walked off. Because she, she didn't want to do this. But she gave him, because David had taken the prescription pad back. She wrote, he wrote out one more prescription, which was going to be for Shinobi. And he took the prescription bag back from Elijah. And she gives Shinobi the last prescription. She's like, that's the last one. And 
she was like, where's my money? And he's like, I'm not giving you no damn money. F and F word. And he walks off. And Elijah puts her turban back over and try and compose herself to go back in the house. Um. So, Ray's scary ass is at home. Well, goes back into his room and his uncle is sitting there waiting for him, flicking a lighter for some god-awful reason. And his uncle explains to him, I've always known you weren't built for this. He's like, I've known since you were born and you came out so dark that I had to protect you because you and I are the same. And plenty of people put their hands on me because I was the dark one. And I knew I had to protect you. So... He fired Ray. He's like, you out the business. You out the game. It's over for you. You done. Um, so we then go back to the veil. And Saren's mama is sitting there looking super nervous. Um, she's looking at all the black people and clutches her pearls. Girl, nobody's, nobody's checking for you. And so David's like, uh, Miss Kelly, what the hell are you doing here? And she's like, you was with Saren last. I know you know where he is. What did that letter mean? He's like, you're going to have to ask Saren. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, I need to know what you know. He's like, you don't want to know what I know. He's like, I know that I know about bruises all up and down to where he can hardly stand. And when he's not uh, recovering or, or fighting off bruises, he's fighting to keep niggas out his sheets. I said, oh, shit. He telling all the best. Oh. No. Sarah mama looks stunned. I don't think she knew that the stepfather was messing with the baby. So he's like, what you should do is get away from me before I, I tell everything I know. Go on back home now. Go on. Now, uh, we then go to... David is walking up to, I guess, where him and Sky used to hang out on that electric, that green box. And, and not Saren, but Sky. Sky is there. And he asked Sky, he's like, he's, he said, are you leaving? And he's like, yeah, you don't need me anymore. And he was asked Sky, oh, what was his one wish in life? And he was like, for my son to be better than me. And, and David said, well, am I? And Scott says to David, you're the lamb, which refers back to the son of man. When David hollered at the church, he's like, I am the son of man. And I thought uh, that may be a foreshadowing for something later because the lamb was slain. So I don't know. But so David walks in the house and Gloria is pissed. And she and David get into this nasty argument. Oh, my God. Um. So, she was like, how you let the whole neighborhood know you was running around with the boys who got that boy hurt? And he was like, I was telling the truth. I wasn't dealing. She was like, you think they care about that? And they got into this big argument. He's like, I, he's like, I'm sick of all of this. And she was like, do you want another pill? And she was like, oh, what you're not going to do is be disrespectful in my house. And he was, and she was like, you can get out. And he was like, fine, I'm tired of taking all care of all your shit anyway. Like, they went at each other's throats. However, none of that actually happened. He come in the house. Gloria looking pitiful on the sofa. Because she about to start getting the shakes from withdrawals. JG pitiful. He tell JG to go to bed. Gloria asked him, do you have any more of those aspirin? Father God. And David, at this point, knows his mama's gone. She gone. She she all the way back into her addiction. She gone. So he says, Yeah, I have one left. And so it's just I I hope there's a season two and it doesn't just end like this because I've been telling y'all that Glory been high since she lost her job. Y'all listen to me next time. Um, so, Shinobi goes to fill that last prescription. And he starts getting antsy. And he says to 
the guy filling the prescription, he's like, what's taking so long? He was like, we're sorry, you know, the system is down because of the storm. You know, everything is backed up. We're trying to get you taken care of. Who rose up on the side of him but the cop? The cop that picked up Ray. And I was like, oh, damn. And he was like, thanks for calling us. But the guy, the, the pharmacy man who was filling the prescription, he was like, yes, Mr. Young, just give us a minute and we will take care of you. Which means he put David's name on that prescription. So if anything came back, it was going to come back to David. Okay, Shinobi. So the police put Shinobi in the back of the cop car. And guess who was sitting in the back of the cop car waiting for him? Uncle Teo. So, I don't know. Uncle Tails clearly has bought this particular policeman. Or he's working with the cops himself. I'm not exactly sure. It wasn't explained. So. Shinobi is like, he's like, so how long have you been working with Desmond? He's like, Desmond. And he was like, yeah, with these prescriptions. And he was like. And. Shinobi proceeded to scream and sing like a bird. He's like, I people know stuff. I know stuff too. And I don't know what he told the uncle because we didn't hear that part of the conversation. But I believe it put the nail in Desmond's coffin. So David goes back to the school. He's like, he told his mama that they, they, when they were talking the night before, he's like, I got to go to the school tomorrow. I had to pick, not to drop off something. So. David goes and returns the script pad back to Dr. Bree's office. And he runs into the principal as he's leaving. And she was like, David, why are you here as a student? Are you here to volunteer and help uh, with the shelter? And he was like, no, um, I came to drop something off. And she was like, well, the school is not open to students, so you can't be here. And she was like, Mrs. Kelly wants to talk to you again about Sarah. And she wants me to talk to your mother about you say, telling whatever you know about Saren. And she's like, yeah, my mom wants to talk to you, too, about Miss Kelly dra grabbing me up and her not being notified. So she'll reach out to you. I was like, oh. Ooh. And I, ooh. <laughs> I said, oh, David. David always, he's, he's playing chess while y'all fools is playing checkers. Y'all just not going to get ahead of this young man. So... We um then see we see Dave uh Ray's car is parked in this parking lot and we see Desmond pull up. Desmond runs up on the car, pulls out his gun like he gonna kill Ray, and taps on the window. He rolls the window down. Who is in the car? Uncle Tao. So he looking dumb in the face and he was like, "Nigga, you thought?" And the police. The policeman comes up behind Desmond and we hear, we cut from the scene and as we're cutting from that scene to David, there's a gunshot. So, David returns back to the Ville from school and he sees Ray and he was like, um, it's over, you know, Desmond is gone. And he was like, how do you know? Because he's like, my uncle said, don't ask questions that you can't live with the answers for. Dead, dead and gone. Homie's dead and gone. So, um, Ray is like, he was like, uh, we got to, he's like, we just going to lay low. And he was like, nah, you out. And he was like, you can't tell me what to do. And he was like, yeah, I can Cause what you gonna do? He's like, I will dust you out here. He's like, I don't make threats, but I do keep promises. Say something, scary ass. And so Ray says to him, he's like, you're just like Sky. He's like, every word that comes out of your mouth I, is Sky. And David says, thank you. And, and Ray says, well, I always wanted a little brother to take care of. And David looked at him like, nigga, I, no. Still not. No. No. Just no. Take your scary ass on. So then David goes and have a conversation with Tara. They both apologize. They flirty flirt. And then Tara's mama 
It's like, <clears throat> get your ass in this house. I told you about talking to this little fast ass boy. Get your ass in the house. So she's like, your mama is always making you come in the house. She's like, only when I'm talking to you. Well. And so they talk about, she's, uh, Tara's like, I don't know if I want to go to the performing arts school. He's like, are you still nervous about the audition? She was like, I don't know if I want to go to that performing arts school. And so I might just go to whatever the local high school is. Because they don't even, the so performing arts school doesn't even have a football team or anything like that. And David said, yeah, I'm thinking of the same thing. She was, uh, she was like, I'm tired of missing the bus. She was like, well, get your butt up early enough so you don't miss the bus. And so we then cut from them and we see Dr. Woods Trap is on the phone. She's calling Hurston about and asking to speak to admissions on behalf of one Mr. David Young. And then we cut to David's face and then it zooms in on his face and then it fades to black and that's the end of the episode. We got nothing about Saren and where he is and if he's okay. We don't know where Star is or where he is and if he's okay. Um, like there's a lot for a season finale. This season finale felt like it was written as if if this was the end, everything, most 90% of the storylines were wrapped up. However, there were a few loose ends left so that if a season two is granted, then they still have storylines to pick up for season two. This was an absolutely amazing first season for a show. I absolutely enjoyed the show as a whole. It has such symbolism, such great writing, such great acting from the actors. I absolutely cannot wait for season two. I am 100% sure that they are going to... I, I, pray that they get a season two i pray i pray that they get a season two because it is a really awesome show um so that is my review and recap for the season finale of david makes man please like comment and subscribe drop down in the comments give me what was your best moment what was your worst moment did you have any questions i know some people were confused about what happened in this episode so if you have any questions let's get down in the comments and chat about it and please don't forget to join us me myself me myself me myself join myself L Teddy 27 official and really BTV on Friday. Uh, time to be determined. Please look out for your notifications for our live panel chat about the season finale of David Makes Man. Um, I'm Ebby Reviews and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.